Hello, and a very warm welcome to my channel. This video will give you a piece of breaking news. Harry looks like freed from the grip and captive in the latest appearance without Meghan. Prince Harry delivered a speech for the opening ceremony of the AIDS 2020 conference yesterday. From the garden of his rented Los Angeles home, it came days after he appeared alongside Meghan Markle for a poignant message on racism. And a body language expert has claimed Prince Harry was less anxious when he delivered a speech without Meghan Markle yesterday. Meghan to deliver a message about racism to the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, in which body language expert Judy James claimed he looked like a fish out of water. Speaking to Daily Star Online, Judy says he looked freed from the grip and a more comfortable standing alone in his latest appearance. She said, after an uncomfortable looking performance from Harry as he was squeezed into the side of the frame and royally upstaged by Meghan, whose speaking skills are on a completely different level, Harry does look more comfortable here speaking alone and center stage in an outdoor setting. Although Meghan isn't in this latest video, I would suspect she is probably still present as, in lockdown, it would be unusual for her to not get involved. Harry's body language and his presenting techniques suggest he's less anxious now he's not fidgeting as he waits his turn from someone who is a formidable act to follow. But his level of performance still suggests some discomfort. Looks like a captive by Megan. His eye contact is more defined than it was with Megan, but he is making a speech rather than tuning into his audience as individuals. So he still looks camera wary, with some micro grimaces of his mouth hinting at how hard he's trying to get it right. However, his gestures are more open as he is less hemmed in than he was in the studio setting though and some small bouncing movements from his shoulders, plus a better special gap under his armpits suggests he feels more powerful and energetic here. Judy went on to say, Megan is a very bad inspirational speaker, who is speaking from the hypocrite while Harry still looks to be learning on the terrible job. Meanwhile, as an American, Karen Townsend, reporter of HotAir.com, also taught Harry and Meghan a lesson. The title is, Harry and Meghan are here to tackle systematic racism and colonialism too. She wrote, Harry and Meghan are desperately trying to remain relevant now that they have officially taken a leave from the firm, a characterization of the royal family it is said Queen Elizabeth II has been known to use. Our heroes have arrived, though we really didn't even know we needed them. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are not only actively supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, now they are including colonialism, too. The Queen says they can come back into the fold and take up where they left off, should the two decide to do that. So, what do Harry and Meghan have to lose? They are comfortably renting a home owned by Tyler Perry in California, and Meghan is hoping to reignite her D-list Hollywood career. Her prince, after all, pitches her availability for a little voiceover work in movies to the likes of Disney executive Bob Iger at formal receptions. Now that the royal couple is attempting to make their own way in the world, keeping their names in the headlines is important. This is rather easy in the current atmosphere of civil unrest, given that Meghan Markle fancies herself the voice of the woke. She and Harry call out racial injustice, including in June when Meghan delivered a commencement address to the 2020 graduates of Los Angeles, Immaculate Heart High School. She urged the graduating students to speak out against police brutality and racial injustice in the United States. She added a personal memory from her childhood in Los Angeles to the speech, comparing today to the 1992 Los Angeles riots. So, when Harry and Meghan joined the Queen's Commonwealth Trust on Wednesday in a video conversation about fairness, justice, and racial equality, the two spoke about their very different upbringings and how they are learning about racism together. That seems in conflict with Meghan's references to her own first-hand experiences of racism due to her biracial heritage, but never mind. What does she have to learn, is the question. If she is here to be our social justice Sherpa? The Queen's Commonwealth Trust is separate from the royal family. Harry is president, and Meghan is vice president. Harry is down with the struggle. He even includes the past days of British colonization in his talks to young people. Meghan is 38. People this age should know better, but I suppose that's on the education system in America for Meghan and the royal bubble in England for the prince. Black Lives Matter was founded after the death of Trayvon Martin at the hands of a person who was not a policeman. He called himself a neighborhood watch kind of guy. The wrong in the world is nothing new and Black Lives Matter didn't discover it. Racial inequality and injustice issues have been around since the days of slavery in our country. 
If Megan thinks 1992 was bad, she should have been around during the summer of 1968. The point is, we are a nation of flawed human beings who strive to do better for everyone. The United States isn't perfect, but it's the best the world has, to be sure. Meghan Markle is the Yoko Ono of the firm. I can only imagine what Queen Elizabeth II thinks about all this wokeness coming from her grandson and his wife, now Californians. Does Harry now expect his grandmother to make a public speech apologizing for England's past actions? Meghan is an ambitious woman. She is said to have political aspirations of her own. She believes she is destined to fight racism. Harry's standard phrase while waving his arms about, there's still so much more to do. The point is, Harry, we don't want you to be doing it or your loudmouth nonsensical wife. Please speak as if you're just the first people to utter those opinions and you're not. Why not follow Nelson Mandela's lead and look to the future instead of your pair of stupid undiplomatic idiots? You must resign your post to the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. You are no longer serving royals and you just made yet another hash of something to do with the Commonwealth. The royal family needs to give serious consideration to having Harry undergo a mental evaluation. Important to do this before he squanders his 40 million pound inheritance from his mother and great-grandmother. It's a certainty that's what Mistress Markle is after. He is showing himself to be blatantly unstable. Hope the money is locked up. Meanwhile, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's recent comments surrounding the Commonwealth also have been criticized for disrespecting the Queen by a royal expert. Back to this news for anyone that doesn't know. In the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, Harry said the Commonwealth needed to follow others to have acknowledged the past and are trying to right their wrongs. Megan also said it is the time of reckoning when individuals should be putting their hands up to own their past wrongdoings. But the pair poignant message wasn't to everyone's liking, with BBC presenter Andrew Neil taking to Twitter to ask, what's it got to do with them? And now, Evening Standard Royal correspondent Robert Jobson has accused the pair of disrespecting the Queen who acts as the head of the Commonwealth with their remarks. He told Talk Radio, I think that to criticize the Queen's life work is disrespectful. I think that things have changed since the Queen inherited this role as head of the Commonwealth. At the time, it was only a handful of countries that had joined the Commonwealth. In that time, there has been a huge improvement and development in what has happened in the terms of money put into the education and professions which are linked through the Commonwealth. He went on to claim, Meghan Markle doesn't understand the Commonwealth. Mr. Jobson added, Harry is frankly just picking bits out that he wants to. It's very easy to criticize something from a distance in a millionaire's mansion that has actually done a lot of good over the years. I really do think that they should think very carefully before criticizing and asking the British public to apologize again for our behavior in the Commonwealth. You have to be kidding. These two woke idiots make absolutely no sense with their gibberish. They both have been privileged and yet would have believed we've oppressed them in some manner. It's laughable how utterly stupid they are. The bad thing is a lot of young people are soaking this up and believing it. A culture war at some point will become a real war. It appears that has not received the things on her leaving the list of demands. Meghan is spitefully going after any royal family member she feels blocked her wishes. She appears to have absolutely no concern what damage does publicly or personally to any of the victims she wishes to hurt and bully. Doesn't appear to be a nice person at all, yet she wants to convince organizations to use her to front their work to the public. Did anyone else get to talk during the Zoom meeting? Megan goes on and on and adds the same words to say the same thing. It makes her speech longer so she can remain in the spotlight and showcase her belief that she is so utterly brilliant. I noticed her shouldering Harry to the side, like she was reminding him not to speak. After that long speech, it came down to, this is like growing pains. It's painful. And thank you for the work you do. Meg goes in, on in circles, like a politician to keep speaking without adding much to the conversation. Did you see that? Leave a comment for me below to discuss them with my fans in the comment section. If you love my video, remember to like and share it for anyone at any time you want. Also, subscribe to the Sussex Daily News version 2 to get more news from the royal family members by our team. Now, have a nice day and see you in the next videos. Bye!